Hey guys, what's going on? So I am on my family's 247 Edgewater and a couple weeks ago, I made a video about how we found a gas leak on our boat. So we actually pulled apart this bottom floor deck and found a couple leaks in our gas tank. So right away, my dad went ahead and started calling companies to get a new gas tank made for this boat. So we called around and he decided with the company who actually originally made the gas tank, which is Ezel Marine. Now it's been a couple weeks since then and we have a new gas tank that actually got shipped straight to the mechanic who is going to be replacing the gas tank for us and that is Andrew from HMS Howard Marine Service. Now since then we've taken almost all the gas out of the gas tank because it was full so now it's empty, almost empty, enough for me to get at least to the ramp. But we had 150 gallons in the tank and we took it all out over the last couple of weeks and now we're ready to bring it in and switch out these fuel tanks. Now we don't have a trailer for our boat, but Andrew does have a trailer, so he's going to meet me at the boat ramp right now. I'm gonna bring you guys along on this boat fuel tank refit, and hopefully we learn something helpful. I know I'm definitely gonna learn a few things, so I hope you guys enjoy. Now let's get this boat out of the water. We're ready. Push is off. Okay, see you at the ramp, bro. See ya. Okay, we have our boat here at uh, HMS Marine Service. Andrew has been in the marine business for 45 years. He can do just about anything you want to your boat. You know, total engine, repowers, ju just anything at all to a boat. So our boat is here today. He's gonna try this little trick that somebody told me about where you take a pressure cleaner and you know how gas tanks are all encapsulated in foam. And it's, you know, I see people use long screwdrivers and machetes. We're going to try and use a pressure cleaner. And he actually already started and tried it before we got here. And he saved us one side to show us how it works. And uh, evidently, it's working out pretty good. So we're, we're going to show you that. safer and I think it's maybe it looks a bit messier at the beginning but in the end you just wash it down and it all comes it goes away because it offloads to the top so it's very easy cleanup. It's way safer than having blades or or anything like that that can hurt something or cut some wire or anything like that. It just broke loose and came up by itself. Yeah, it Suddenly floated. started coming up I'm like whoa whoa what's going on? See she floated. How's that? That that's pretty amazing. Didn't expect that. Real boats, eh? And you get them out of the hole, and if they didn't pop with air, like a hull, you get a couple gallons of water, just pour it around the edge, and the water would work its way to the bottom, just enough to pop it well, up. this worked out good. Yeah, look at that. The pressure plan has worked out good. It's a great so, idea. Should we get these? All right, so they did the dirty part of chipping away at all the foam, and because they were using water, all that water just popped up the gas tank, so it just released it from being all held in there by all the foam. And so we just drained out all the water and then we brought it inside and now it's time to take the gas tank out. We got this tank from Ezel Industries. One of the reasons we did that, they were the original manufacturer of the tank in our boat. So they, they had the measurements. We didn't have to actually take the tank out and measure it and send them measurements. They had all the measurements. So I thought that's gonna be the quickest way. We just ordered another tank from Ezel Industries. What, what I did different, the other tank was an eighth of an inch thick aluminum. It lasted 18 years. I, I don't think that's bad, but I went with 3 sixteenths. So I went a little bit thicker. The other thing I did is I paid extra to have it powder coat because replacing your, your gas tank is not something you ever want to do twice. So we don't want to ever look at this thing again. So I went thicker, had it powder coated. She should last as long as we keep the boat now. Oh, 
come back to about here. Now, Pretty gross down in there. Yeah. All right, so the old tank is out. Now I guess they're gonna clean out this whole area. There's a lot of extra old foam and gross foam and, and gas in there since we had a gas leak. And they're gonna clean that out and then I guess put the new tank in after that. Went pretty smoothly. Yeah, I'm glad we didn't try it ourselves. After watching them with the, um, with the hoist pull it out um, I'm glad I'm letting the professionals do it. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> it was definitely time for a new tank. Well, we knew we had, what, three or four holes up top. There's one. I thought it was two major holes. There's one there. No, that's that's getting ready. It was two major holes. That's a hole, a little hole right there. Oh, it is? And then under this. Yeah. Our JB Weld did holds for those people who said it wasn't going to. We just peeled off the other ones. Oh. More there holes. was other holes. Oh yeah. That we went down the side here. There's about to be a hole right there in the corner. Oh yeah. Right there, see it bro? Yeah. So what do you think it's from then? Age, water, corrosion. Yeah. It's just corrosion. Yeah. Corrosion. It, like your screws. They rusted because there was stopped at natural oxidization of the stainless. That's what happens with aluminum. Same thing. You get dirt on it. That's when it discolors or goes to uh, starts corroding. Okay. Well, we sprung a leak on top of this tank first, which was really lucky because we could pump it down, you know, six gallons and it stopped leaking. But what we didn't realize is after they pulled it out, um, there were holes. They they hadn't started yet, but just moving it around. There's holes that go all, look, look at that. Yep. You see that? Mm -hmm. Now watch over here, this is the bottom of our tank. The bottom of our tank wasn't leaking. And just, look at that. I shoved that Phillips screwdriver, look at the size of that hole with the Phillips screwdriver. Look at this, look at that. I just pushed that right through. Let's, let's looks, try it. This looks pretty darn bad right well, there. Well, this is a weld here, so I don't know. No, that's a weld, so that's thick. Let's see what this spot does. Oh, some spots go through like butter. Look, oh my gosh, Burke, look at that, look at this hole. Just with the Phillips screwdriver. Look at that. Look at that, Brooke. <laughs> You've been really wanting to do that. Oh my you? gosh. Well, I, I would say we definitely needed a new fuel tank. That was the thing about replacing it, was we could see that there were holes on top that we could patch, you know, and work with it but we had no idea what the rest of the tank looked like because you could only see the top when it was all foamed in. These holes were so close to being bad and that could have been a really bad thing if that actually popped while the boat was in the water because this tank was full. You know, it might have been a really slow leak, but it would not have been a good thing. These leaks wouldn't be slow. Look at the size of these holes. They're, they're, they're ginormous holes. So now it's been a few days since we've been here and when they took the fuel tank out, like with a lot of things with boats, a lot of times you open a can of worms and that's basically what happened when they took this fuel tank out. 
Do you want to explain what they no, did? Let's go to the boat and show. We're back at our boat. Um, what they had done was after they pulled the tank, they cleaned all the foam out good and they added water to the bilge. They plugged the bilge and added water and they noticed that water was just gushing in to this fiberglass pan that the gas tank used to set in. It, it had a lot of salty, dirty, smelly water in here when we pulled the tank out. So what they did was they laminated fiberglass in over all the small little holes that were just letting, you know, bilge water and salt water into the bottom of our tank. Now it's watertight. So now we're gonna start fresh. Definitely looks a lot different in here than the last time we were here. Yeah. Nice and clean. That's a the reason, one of the reasons it was so corroded was because there were holes in there letting water in, yeah. right? Yeah, that's the bottom was just sitting in salt water. So one of the kind of big mysteries was why it was so corroded and the reasoning, one of the reasons at least, I mean yes it was really old, was because there were holes in this, is it a tank area would you call it? What, what would you call this area that the tank sits in? Uh, Compartment? Okay, compartment. we'll call it a compartment. The fuel, tank compartment. The, fuel, the fuel tank compartment had the holes in it, which was letting the salt water in, which is what was making the corrosion of the tank even worse than just from old age and just being... This boat has been kept in the water its whole life. It's never lived on a lift or out of the water. It's always been in the water, too. 17 years of sitting in the water, and those holes finally let enough salt water in there to corrode it and finally pop some holes. Good. Sweet, sweet, just like that. Just like that. Just like that. Oh, what a thing just like that. And she's down. Bring her down. Nice. Like a glove. Like a glove. Woo! Perfect. That was a thing of beauty. Yeah. <laughs> Come back two o'clock with the boat. <laughs> the Wahoo bite's on. We're, we're missing the Wahoo bite. I've okay. Heard. Yeah, we're we're going to work yeah. in the dock yeah. and then... Uh, well, that sure looks a lot prettier. It doesn't. <laughs> uh, we're going to pull her outside when we get back and start. Not everybody's done their Dude, thing. That's what we're talking about. Well, what we'll do is that there was a chunk of rubber still left up here and we're going to put it underneath the pads. Yeah, perfect. And then here we're just going to cut nip these off. The neoprene's glued on. Yeah. That's a neoprene rubber actually meant for uh, Andy Chafe for the fuel tanks. We'll um, do the same thing with the, the, the metal plates and then we'll pour foam, add gas. Okay. What we'll be doing is we'll just put a little bit down so it gets underneath the tank, it creates a, da a dam without lifting the tank. Right. And we'll pour it again with a little bit just to make sure that we get a dam and it doesn't go all yeah. underneath the tank. Just sort of. Because if it went under it, it would lift it. Yeah, yeah. And you don't want that. No. Alright guys, so it's been a few days and we were back at the boat and they just finished filming it in. Check it out. They cleaned the bilge all out in there. That was a mess in there. Nice and clean in there. They got all these wires back together. They bent a couple and had to replace a few when we were trying to get the tank out. Okay, what we did when we foamed the tank in was we did multiple pours. First, a small bit at the bottom just to stop it from going underneath the tank and pushing the tank out. And then once it was kicked, we kept pouring foam in until it came out the top and, and supports the tank now and secures the tank into place. It is a four pound density made for fuel tanks. And as you saw before, we got the uh, neoprene rubber for the anti chafe not only around the tank, but where we've got cleats in there to hold the tank down. And she's all set now, properly bonded to uh, the negative part of the system as well as the deck fill. All we've got to do now is put the top uh, deck cover on and add fuel and you're back on the water. All right guys, so they got it foamed in, they got everything rewired back together again, and it's all hooked up and what a difference what a this looks like than what it did before. It looks beautiful now. And all they have left to do is to put the top deck in like Andrew was saying. And then she's ready to go in the water and we're ready to start fishing again.
pearly white gas tank. Nice. Yep, like always. See you later, bro. All right, guys, so we finally got our boat back and it is the moment we've been waiting for. We're about to take the boat to the gas dock and fill it up with fuel. We got really lucky with this fuel tank refit because this part of our boat, this whole deck just came right up and we didn't have to worry about cutting the deck open at all. But Andrew sealed it, caulked it back down, got really nice caulk joints here. It looks really beautiful. He did an awesome job. He also replaced these three pie holes, they were pretty old and he also had to do a few fiberglass touch-ups on them and it came out really good. I like it. I'm, I'm happy. We uh, What were we down? Three months? No, not that long. No? I don't think so. Well, it's getting close. Well, at least two months we were down. We thought we were going to do a few patches, run the gas down a little and use the boat, but we got so many comments from people that said, don't use that boat, it's, a, it's dangerous, it's a hazard, that we didn't. Brooke and, and Victor were busy fishing on the west coast in New England, so they didn't need the boat anyway. So we just let it <laughs> set true. here, and we had the inspection tag. So Ezel Marine had the measurements because they're the original makers of the tank. So we just ordered that tank. It took about three weeks to get. It was delivered to Andrew's shop. You know, it took him a little longer than expected. We went through a boat show, which I understand, you know, slows your, your boat process down. There was a poker run. He had big fancy go fast boats in his shop and I knew they were gonna take priority over my little Edgewater, so I didn't worry. You know, he, I guess he took about three or four weeks to get it done, but it, it, it turned out nice. So like we had said at the beginning of the video, Andrew's been in the marine business for what, 40 something years? Yeah. And you've been working with him for a long time a as long well. A long time, yeah. Because my dad's also in the marine industry. And he works in like the Pompano, Fort Lauderdale, Lighthouse Point area. If you guys need anything done on your boat, check him out. I will have all his information in the description. If you want to bring your boat to him, that works too if you're not that local. And then also with the fuel tank, that was Ezel Industries. Really easy company to work with. They were the ones who originally made the tank, so we didn't have to send the measurements and everything. But they also do custom work. So they do production tanks, but they also do custom specialty work. So if you have something that you need custom specialty if you're watching this video because you need a fuel tank replaced, check them out. I will also have their information linked down below. Like we said, they sent the tank straight to Andrew's shop, which was awesome and we didn't have to worry about that. Time to fill her up. That's it, <laughs> time to fill her up. We're gonna take her to the fuel dock right now, fill her up, and we're taking her out tomorrow for the first day back. Yep. Not sure if we're fishing or diving yet, but you guys will see that video. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. If you have any questions about this whole thing, comment down below. I'll be sure to answer your questions and I'll see you in the next one. One last thing, we've been thinking about making a video about the cost of owning a boat. So if you guys are interested in seeing that kind of video where we tell you all about owning this boat over the last five years, comment down below and we'll see if we can make it that video.